Howdy, 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 my name is Nanashi Sasuke, and welcome back to Holiday Week. In this episode, we're going to be doing three holidays. We're going to be doing Kwanzaa, Boxing Day, and the Japanese New Year, Omisoka. Now, I realize I could have done Boxing Day yesterday, because yesterday actually was Boxing Day. But I'm trying to not actually have these videos come out while the holiday is happening, to minimize the possibility of being offensive, because I don't know how... People who celebrate these holidays feel about there being some guy in New Jersey doing YouTube videos about them. But I figure might as well not do them on the actual day just in case. So I'm gonna drink some water real quick. There goes my hand sanitizer. And... Now initially, I didn't really have a whole lot of information for Kwanzaa. Because this is the official Kwanzaa website. And it didn't look like it was the official Kwanzaa website. I thought I was in the wrong place. And I had this website, which is seven interesting facts about Kwanzaa. And according to the, uh, the compatibility mode, it's only going to take like two to three minutes to read this, which really, really does not feel like it's enough Kwanzaa things. So I went ahead and grabbed the Kwanzaa website anyway, and we're going to start from there. So, Kwanzaa is an African-American and Pan-African holiday, which celebrates family, community, and culture. I don't know what Pan-African means, I'll say that right now. Celebrate it from 26th of December through the 1st of January. Okay, so Kwanzaa's happening right now, as of yesterday. So Kwanzaa and Boxing Day both started yesterday. So if I had done this video yesterday, that would have made so much sense. I'm just dumb. Sorry. Um, its origins are in the first harvest celebrations of Africa, from which it takes its name. The name Kwanzaa is derived from the phrase Matunda ya Kwanzaa, which means first fruits in Swahili, a pan-African language which is the most widely spoken African language. Really? Maybe that's... No, I'm not going to say that. The first fruits celebration... First fruit... First fruits celebrations are recorded in African history as far back as ancient Egypt and Nubia, and appear in ancient and modern times in other classical African civilizations such as Ashantiland and Yoruba land. Or Yoruba land? These celebrations are also found in ancient and modern times among societies as large as empires, the Zulu ki or kingdoms, sw uh, Swaziland, or smaller societies and groups like the Matebele, Thonga, and Lovdu, all of southeastern Africa. Kwanzaa builds on the five fundamental activities of continental Africa, first fruit celebrations, in-gathering, reverence, commemoration, recommitment, and celebration. Kwanzaa, then, is a time of in in gathering of the people to reaffirm the bonds between them, a time of special reverence for the Creator and creation in thanks and respect for the blessings, bountifulness, and beauty of creation, a time of commemoration of the past and pursuits of its lessons and its honor, and in honor of its models of human excellence, our ancestors, a time of recommitment to our highest cultural ideals and our ongoing effort to always bring forth the best of African culture, the cultural thought and practice, and a time for celebration of the good, the good of life and of existence itself, the good of family, community, cult, and culture, the good of the awesome and the ordinary, in a word, the good of the divine, natural, and social. That's more than one word, but okay. The African-American branch. Rooted in the... Okay, that so that was the continental African roots, the African-American branch now. Rooted in this ancient history and culture, Kwanzaa develops as a flourishing branch of the African-American life and struggle as a, a recreated and expanded ancient tradition. Thus, it bears special characteristics only in African-American... Uh, only an African-American holiday, but also a pan-African one. I feel like the word of is supposed to be in there somewhere. Also, I feel like that's not supposed to be capitalized, or at least not comma. For it draws from the cultures of various African peoples, and is celebrated by millions of Africans throughout the world African community. Moreover, these various African people celebrate Kwanzaa because it speaks not only to African Americans in a special way, but also to Africans as a whole, and it stress on history, values, family, community, and culture. Kwanzaa was established in 1966 in the midst of the Black Freedom Movement, and thus reflects its concern for cultural groundedness and thought and practice, and the unity and self-determination associated with this. It was conceived and established to serve several functions. Okay. Uh, reaffirming and restoring culture. First, Kwanzaa was created to reaffirm and restore our rootedness in African culture. It is therefore an expression of recovery and reconstruction of African culture, which was being conducted in the general context of the Black Liberation Movement of the 60s, and in the specific context of the organization US, the founding organization of Kwanzaa and its authoritative keeper of its tradition. 
Secondly, Kwanzaa was created to serve as a regular communal celebration to reaffirm and reinforce the bonds between us as a people. It was designed to be an in-gathering to strengthen community and reaffirm common identity, purpose, and direction as a people and a world community. Thirdly, Kwanzaa was created to introduce and reinforce the uh, Ngozo Saba, the Seven Principles. The seven communitarian African values are unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. The stress on the Nguzo Saba was at the same time an emphasis on the importance of African communitarian values in general, which stress family, community, and culture, and speak to the best of what it means to be African and human in the fullest sense. And Kwanzaa was conceived as a fundamental and important way to introduce and reinforce these values and cultivate appreciation for them. Kwanzaa was created in 1966 by Dr. Maulana Karenga, professor of Africana Studies at California State University, Long Beach, author and scholar activist who stresses the indispensable need to preserve, continually revitalize, and promote African American culture. Finally, it is important to note Kwanzaa is a cultural holiday, not a religious one, thus available to and practiced by Africans of all religious faiths who come together based on the rich, ancient, and varied common ground of their Africanness. Summarized from Mulana Karenga, Kwanzaa Celebration of Family, Community, Culture, 2008, Los Angeles, University of Sancor Press, and then there's the website. There's also links to the seven principles, the symbols, the greetings, the gifts, the colors and decorations, the celebration, and the meditation. So the seven principles were already explained. Let's see what the symbols are. Let's see. Kwanzaa has seven basic symbols and two supplemental ones. Each represents values and concepts reflective of African culture and contributive, contributive to community building and reinforcement. I'm not. I'm still not sure if I said it right. The basic symbols in Swahili and then in English are Mazao, the crops. These are symbolic of African harvest celebrations and of the rewards of productive and collective labor. Nkeka, the mat. <clears throat> This is symbolic of our tradition and history and therefore the foundation on which we build. Kanara, the candle holder. This is symbolic of our roots, our parent people, continental Africans. Muhindi, the corn. This is symbolic of our children and our future which they embody. Mishuma Saba, the seven candles. These are symbolic of the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles, the matrix and minimum set of values which African people are urged to live by in order to rescue and reconstruct their lives in their own image and according to their own needs. Kikombe Cha Umoja, the Unity Cup. This is symbolic of the foundational principle and practice of unity which makes all else possible. <coughs> and Zawadi, the gifts. These are symbolic of the labor and love of parents and the commitments made and kept by the children. The two supplemental symbols are Bendera, the flag. The colors of the Kwanzaa flag are the colors of the organization Us, black, red, and green. Black for the people, red for their struggle, and green for the future and hope that comes from their struggle. It is based on the colors given by the by the Hon, or or is it by the honorable honorable Marcus Garvey as national covers for African people throughout the world and Nguzo Saba poster, the poster of the Seven Principles. There doesn't seem to be pictures of any of these things. Um, commemorative postal stamp, founder's message, all the way up to 2013. There's her biography. So I can find a picture of the flag. Kwanzaa flag. Google, what's uh, what's happening? Or is it showing me this because I searched Kwanzaa? Okay. Fly a bandera during Kwanzaa. At Kwanzaa, families celebrate their African heritage and togetherness. Find a picture of the bandera, red, a red, black, and green flag displayed during the holiday. You can make your own flag to celebrate. Oh, it's the Crayola website. Oh, the candles are moving. Cool. So let's see. Here's, yeah, here's the Kwanzaa flag. I'm not sure why it went straight to the Crayola website to show me that. There are probably other ways I could have found out what the Kwanzaa flag looked like, but now we know. So what are the seven interesting facts about Kwanzaa? Beginning on December 26th and lasting for seven days, Kwanzaa is the celebration of community, family, and culture, established as a means to help African Americans reconnect with their African roots and heritage. Here are some interesting facts you may not know about this annual celebration. To be honest, I didn't know any of this about Kwanzaa. I'm I'm 27, and I'm African-American, and I knew none of this. 
So, the first U.S. postage stamp to commemorate Kwanzaa, 1997. It celebrated its 50th birthday in 2016. Wow. The holiday was created by Dr. Maulana Karenga in 1966 to celebrate family, culture, and heritage, and is modeled after the first harvest celebrations in Africa. The number seven. There are seven principles and seven primary symbols that emphasize a unique set of values and ideals during the seven days of Kwanzaa, also spelt with seven letters. Wow. Umoja is unity. With over, or is it Umoja? Hmm. With over 2,000 languages spoken on the African continent, Kwanzaa adopted one of the many unifying languages, Swahili, which is spoken by millions on the African content, continent. The name Kwanzaa comes from a Swahili phrase meaning first fruits. Red, black, and green. The colors of Kwanzaa are a reflection of the Pan-African movement representing... Supposed to be a space there, PBS. Unity for peoples of African descent worldwide. Black for the people, red for the noble blood that unites all people of African ancestry, and green for the rich land of Africa. Didn't the didn't the Kwanzaa website say the red was for the bondage? Hmm. Stamp that! The first U.S. poacher stamp to commemorate Kwanzaa was issued in 1997. There have been five designs released since, the most recent being in 2016. Universal message. Kwanzaa is rooted in African culture. However, people from all racial and ethnic backgrounds are welcome to join in the celebration. Okay, cool. Star power. Celebrities who've been known to celebrate Kwanzaa every year include Oprah, Maya Angelou, Chuck D, Angelina Jolie, and Cynthia St. James, who designed the first Kwanzaa poster stamp. Huh. And then there's these articles here that I already been to the official website and I'm not touching these two. I have my reasons. Okay, so now it's Boxing Day, which is mentalfloss.com. Let's un um, undo the uh, compatibility mode. It's by Ethan Trex and was upload. I guess it was. It must have been edited yesterday because I've had this article for like a couple of weeks. So obviously I didn't get it on December 26th, so I guess they changed it. Relax, Hallmark conspiracy theorists. Boxing Day isn't some prank to confuse America. It's a real holiday in the United Kingdom and other European countries that dates back to the days of Queen Victoria. Here are some facts to get you up to speed. I don't know why there's an ad about peanut butter. Moving on. It occurs on December 26th. Get out of here, peanut butter. Boxing Day is observed annually on December 26th. If it falls on a weekend, the public holiday itself will be celebrated on Monday. It fell on a Wednesday, so they don't have that problem this year. It became an official holiday during the reign of Queen Victoria. Though some historians trace its origins back much further to medieval times. Today, it's largely an extension of the Christmas holiday and a big day for sporting events and shopping. Really now. Also, I'm sorry that I'm reading this like I read my other uh, Let's Reads with like up and down inflections and whatnot, but that's just the vibe it gave me as soon as I started reading, so that's the vibe, that's what I, how I started reading it. No one really knows where the name originated. Many historians think the holiday's name is derived, does this go somewhere? It goes to express.co.uk news. From the church practice of opening alms boxes the day after Christmas and distributing money to the poor. Historically, British employers follow the church's lead by sliding workers and servants' gifts or cash on December 26th. Oh, that's nice. I wonder if any of my friends got Boxing Day things from their jobs. Um, others believe the other believes the box refers to the boxes of gifts employers gave to their servants on the day after Christmas. In wealthy households, servants were often required to work on Christmas Day, but given the 26th off in order to celebrate the holiday on their own. That's that's bogus and kind at the same time. It's a big day for shopping. That explains a lot. Historically, Boxing Day's post-Christmas sales have long made it one of the UK's busiest shopping days of the year. And while it still falls within the top five biggest shopping days of the year, the popularity of online shopping has reduced the overall spending people do on the 26th. Fifteen years ago, it was pretty much guaranteed that you would only get big sales a few times a year. Boxing Day and the big summer clearance. Brian Roberts, an analyst at Kantar Retail, told The Telegraph in 2015. That's no longer the case. The Boxing Day sales are pretty much dead, Roberts added. Black Friday and Cyber Monday illustrate Christmas sales are starting earlier and earlier. There's a possibility prices will just keep on dropping in the run-up to Christmas. This makes the Boxing Day sales incredibly diluted. There's no boxing involved. Despite the name, British observances of Boxing Day involve no fisticuffs. For uh, patricians, however, another sport rules the day. Fox hunting. Huh? 
Though it's a long-held tradition, many animal rights activists and groups would like to see the practice done away with altogether. Especially since, technically, it's illegal. <clears throat> In the days leading up to Boxing Day, the International Fund for Animal Welfare, IFOW, is uh, often very vocal in reminding citizens that ch the chasing or killing of foxes and other British mammals with a pack of dogs was banned because the overwhelming majority of the UK public rejected this so-called sport as cruel and abhorrent. And that's the independent.co.uk. Some other countries do take the name more literally, and other countries' Boxing Day celebrations are more literal. Some former British colonies in Africa and the Caribbean celebrate the holiday with prize-fighting events. Dictionary.com Boxing Day. In Ireland, December 26th is sometimes known as Wren Day. Ireland sometimes refers to the 26th as Wren Day, a nod to an old tradition in which poor children would kill a wren, then sell the feathers to neighbors for good luck. In today's celebrations, the wren is fake. Did it open a new window, or? Yeah, it opened a new window. Is it going to load the new window? S Smithsonian, are you alright? Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. What's happening? What is happening? No, I don't want notifications. If you ever wanted to celebrate the day after Christmas by hunting down a small bird and tying it to the top of a pole, move to Ireland. If that's the if that's the vibe this entire article is gonna have, I'm just gonna move on, Smithsonian. I'm just gonna move on to Omisoka in Japan, welcoming in the new year in Japan. Facts, traditions, food, and closed establishments. Maybe we should read the other one first. Which is Omisoka ringing out the new year in Japan by the Nippon.com staff. Is that what this website is? Yes, it is. Um, and I can also read it in other languages, except I, I personally can't read it in other languages. But if anyone wants the link to this article, I can put that in the description, and then you can read it in other languages. December 31st is arguably one of the most significant dates on the Japanese calendar, known as Omisoka. It encompasses a range of special customs and observances, both traditional and modern, intended to set people on the right foot for the coming New Year. Uh, Oshogatsu, New Year traditions, are infused with the much-revered concept of Engi, a noun that can broadly be translated as luck. Ensuring good fortune in the coming year requires carrying out year-end preparations with careful attention to detail. Leaving loose ends is considered inauspicious, and Omisoka stands as the final day to bring any unfinished business to a close and prevent the misfortunes of one year from spilling over to the next. Custom dictates that kitchens should be given a rest during the first three days of Oshigatsu, and households are often bustling on the last day of the year as cooks carefully place the finishing touches on Oseshi Ryori, Japan's traditional and auspicious rich New Year's cuisine. What is this? Shops and supermarkets are alive with hurried customers snapping up last minute bargains before they enter Sanganichi, the three days of the New Year holiday. For those intending not to budge from the Kotatsu, a low table with a thick coverlet and electric heater common in many homes, December 31st provides a final chance to stock up on sweets, snacks, and other goodies to pacify grumbling bellies groaning for a break from Oseshi. And this picture here says, The Kotamatsu decorates homes and business entrances beginning a few days before the year's end. It's nice. For those who have been too busy to decorate for the season, makeshift stalls and shopping districts offer the full array of traditional decorations. However, prudent revelers are wise to not leave the hanging, se the hanging of seasonal decorations to the last, as the Toshigami, or New Year gods, are a persnickety lot who demand a proper welcome. Ka Kadomatsu, okay I said it wrong, gateway pines, serve to attract deities and placing these important ornaments out on December 31st constitutes Ichiya Kazari, displaying for a, only a single night, a sin carrying the consequence of divine rebuff and misfortune in the coming year. This guideline also applies for other traditional Oshogatsu decorations such as sh uh, Shimikazari, a decorative rope, and Kagami Mochi, rounded rice cakes. The accepted rule of thumb is that all decorations should be in place by December 28th. So, Japanese people, that is tomorrow for me. So I think that, I don't remember how time works for Japan, but I think that might be today for y'all. And here's what the uh, Shime Kazari looks like. It's a little frightening, to be honest. Year-end cleaning, or Osoji, is also an important part of Omisoka, and is thought to have ties to Susubarai? Uh, the traditional end-of-year dusting of regalia at Buddhist temples and Shinto shrines. The custom is said to have started in the Edo period, or Edo period? 
1603 to 1868. That is longer than I... I don't know how long I thought it was, but that's longer than it, I probably thought it was. And was slowly adopted by households over time. Aside from purifying the home prior to the new year, the removal of 12 months worth of clutter and detritus is welcomed by many as a way to reflect on the year past. Once preparations are out of the way, a popular way to spend New Year's Eve is by sitting back with a favorite tipple and enjoying the wide array of seasonal shows on television. Public broadcaster NHK's Kohaku Uda Gassen, the song contest pitting the red team of women entertainers against the white team of men, is an annual favorite. The immensely popular program's program features new and established talent singing hit J-pop songs, as well as crooning popular Inca ballads. In recent years, however, the contest supremacy has been challenged by a slew of non-music programming, including zany comedy shows and live broadcasts of mixed-style martial arts and boxing. Another tradition also thought to have originated in the, the Edo period is enjoying a bowl of Toshikoshi soba as the clock ticks down on the year. Why soba? One explanation says the tradition has its roots in the ease with which the noodles can be bitten through, providing a symbolic break from the trials and tribulations of the past year. In addition, the hardiness of the soba plan and length of the noodles are considered to help ensure longevity and health for the diner. In Western Japan, the dominance of wheat-based udon noodles has produced a separate toshikoshi uh, noodle tradition. The tone in the final hours of Omisoka tends to be solemn, although there are several well-known countdown events for those who enjoy a bit of fanfare. Many also trudge to sites popular for Hatsumode, or Hatsumode, the first prayer of the New Year. It might just be Hatsumode such as Tokyo's Meiji Shrine, but more likely the year will end in a more subdued fashion, such as by heading to a nearby shrine or listening to the Joya no Kane, the ringing of the bell at a Buddhist temple 108 times to represent the early, the, uh, each of the earthly sins and then off to bed. At some temples, like Kyoto's Shionin pictured here, monk, monks handle the bell ringing. At many smaller temples, visitors on New Year's Eve get to sound out the year themselves. Interesting. Now let me see if I can find the name of the... Uh, the music thing again? Is it, uh, here it is. The Ko Kohaku Utagasen. Let's see if we can find some of that on YouTube. Videos. Let's see. Tokyo Girl Perfume Kohaku Utagasen 2017. And uh, there actually was one more, um, yeah, here it is. Welcoming in the new year with the facts and whatnot. Let's see, New Year's Eve. Asoji means big cleaning in English. Uh, this refers to the practice of cleaning the entire house before the new year arrives. Almost all families living in Japan observe this tradition, seeing it as a way to create stronger bonds with each other. As such, tourists can expect most of Japan's cities, even the busy city of Tokyo, to be nearly empty and quiet on Omisoka. That must be interesting and, and a bit spooky. Joya no Kane is a tradition that stems from Buddhism. It is considered to be one of the most important practices. Near midnight, they ring the bells for around one to two hours. Since almost every neighborhood in Japan has its own temple, tourists can expect to hear these bells on Omizoka. Interestingly, the bell ringing done by temples actually follows a certain count. This reflects the Buddhist belief that humans have 108 earthly desires called bon Bono? Banao? that keeps them from reaching enlightenment and help to in removing every last one, each temple monotonously strikes their bell 108 times. This tradition encourages people to leave all the bad things in the past year and look forward to creating a better year ahead with a clear and refreshed mind. The name itself of the tradition translates to mean throwing away the old and moving on with the, uh, to the new night. Ganjitsu Gantan, the New Year's Day. Uh, Ganjitsu or Gantan are both used to refer to New Year's Day, but actually point to different periods of the day. Gantan refers to the uh, just to the morning hours of New Year's Day, while Ganjitsu refers to all 24 hours. However, many locals also may not be aware of this small difference, so using the terms interchangeably is fine. Right after having breakfast, many families have a busy schedule for the rest of New Year's Day. Common activities and traditions include visiting shrines and temples, shopping, eating, drinking, and greeting other people with... Akimashite omedetu gozaimasu, which means Happy New Year. Uh, traditions, foods, and facts. There's the Toshikoshi uh, soba that was mentioned earlier, the Kodomatsu, which are the also mentioned, the Kagami mochi, which are rice cake decorations that many schools, shrines, and homes put up 
put on display to wish for prosperity for generations to come. Although known as the mirror rice cake, it actually does not resemble any of the square or geometric mirrors that are known by many t today. It does, however, resemble ancient round mirrors that served important roles in Shinto rituals. According to the religion, kami or gods, re uh, kami or gods resided in these mirrors. As a way to welcome in the new year with the kami, rice cakes were created in the form of these mirrors. At present, kagami mochis come in different varieties. Most of these come with an orange on top that represents the generations of a household. The uh, kagami mochi is often placed on top of a wooden cabinet for several days before it is broken and eaten on the second Saturday or Sunday of January. Osechi Ryori refers to the uh, set of traditional Japanese food eaten on the very start of the new year. It is often arranged and served in a layered bento box known as, as a jubako. This is three to four. This three to four layered set is initially presented at the center of the table before New Year's Day as an offering to the Toshigami Sama. After midnight, its contents are shared with friends or families. The tradition itself is called Osechi and dates back to the Heian period. Over time, several kinds of food have been added to the Osechi Ryori to represent various wishes. A common food item that can be found in the Jubako is the Renk, the Renkan, a lotus root. The Renkan symbolizes a pleasant future without any troubles. There's also the Iwai Bashi, is a tool that goes hand in hand with the Osechi Ryori. Otoshi Dama, the tradition of grandparents, parents, or relatives giving monetary gifts to children. Kids of the Japanese community often look forward to this part of the new year as they receive small envelopes from four to five, uh, excuse me, five to six different people. Each envelope often contains an amount of 5,000 yen on average, which increases in value as the children grow older. Originally, the tradition involved the Kagami Mochi, which was given to children by parents every new year and was called Toshidama. Soon after, the rice cake was replaced with small toys and items, then finally with money. This Hatsumori refers to the first temple, first visit to a temple or shrine for the year. Is observed by many families, usually from the first to third days of January. A lot of Japan's temples and shrines have several festive attractions during this period, including fortune telling, food stalls, and lucky charms. Safety, love, wealth, health, good exam results for visiting locals or foreign travelers. Is it okay for foreigners to to join in for for the celebration though? These places can get incredibly crowded, especially on January the first. But it is an experience worth all the trouble. Just like the locals, tourists may make a prayer at the designated altar of the temple or shrine. As there is a specific prayer conduct followed in Japan, tourists are advised to initially watch how the locals pray. Typically, upon reaching the altar, one must throw in a few coins into the box located in front of it before ringing the bell. Afterwards, two bows must be made, followed by two claps, then a final bow, which must be as deepest as possible. Hmm. There's the Otoso. It refers to the tradition of drinking sake on New Year's Day. As such, the term is often confused to literally mean New Year's Sake. However, looking at the Japanese characters used for the word shows that it actually refers to the slaughter of a demon that used to attack and inflict terror on the villagers of Japan. Ugh. Relating this to the drinking activity, it can be understood that the purpose of this tradition is to rid oneself of any evil spirits that may cause illness or troubles in the future. The tradition originates from China, where a certain kind of sake was used by the Tang Dynasty for medicinal purposes. During the Heian period, Japan's nobility started observing the Chinese ritual every New Year. The practice was eventually introduced to the commoners by the Edo period. The current way of doing Otosu is to share the same set of special cups throughout the drinking celebration as practiced by Japanese families. Otoso follows the order of youngest to oldest to symbolize the vitality of the younger members of the group being absorbed by the older ones. Okay. Nengaho, or Nengajo, sorry. Uh, refers to a special postcard sent by the Japanese community to their friends or acquaintances before the year ends. It can be compared to the Western practice of sending out Christmas cards. Each card is usually delivered to the recipient by the post office on January the 1st. Usual greetings used in the postcards include the previously mentioned Happy New Year, as well as Katoshi mo Yotoshiku Whoo! Onegai Shimasu! Or is that Onegai Shimasu? Possibly that. Which roughly trans, uh, roughly means, thank you for your support in advance. Aside from these, Nengajos also feature a family photo or a short message written by the sender explaining their condition and New Year resolutions. Aside from properly greeting one's friends, they also serve another purpose involving lot the lottery. Each postcard has a set of lottery numbers on it that provides the recipient with a chance to win various prizes, including electronic devices and travel tickets. However, with the rising popularity of digital media, a big percentage of Japan's youth considers sending out postcards to be an inconvenience. As such, there have 
then recently developed services that allow users to send and receive digital ninjagos through mail, email, or through mobile apps. The sender may also include a video with this message. Uh, Fuku Bukuro, which means lucky bag, refers to the tradition observed by Japan's department stores of filling bags with random items left over from the previous year and selling them at cheap prices. Its origin comes from the old Japanese saying, Nakori mono niwa fuku ni aru, which means roughly that there is wealth in scraps. The discounts offered by shopping malls often fall within the range of 50 to 70 percent. As such, on New Year's Day, Japan's most famous stores like Shibuya 109 often have a long line of customers waiting outside even before they open. Shopping in Japan during uh, Shogatsu can get quite frantic, but it is one of the best times for shoppers to get the greatest deals. Hearing the Emperor's greeting every New Year in Japan live. The Emperor of Japan is known only to make special uh, several appearances throughout the year. Out of these instances, there are only two specific days when the Tokyo Imperial Palace opens its grounds to the public, January the 2nd and December 23rd. Every second day of January, the Emperor and uh, members of the family greet the crowd f from the balcony behind a protective glass. They are scheduled to make five appearances throughout the day at 10 10, 11, 10, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 11.50 a.m., 1.30 p.m., and 2.20 p.m. The other day, December 23rd, is the birthday of the Emperor. Closed establishments. The National Museum, the Twin Observatories, the Imperial East Gardens, Tokyo Tower, and Sky Tree, the Shio Dome Shopping, Odaiba Shopping, and uh, Ropa... Ropangi Hills are not closed. So the the last four are not closed. The first three are closed certain times. Uh, Nijo Castle and the Imperial Palace are closed for a certain time period. And Osaka, the castle is closed, but the aquarium and the sky building are fine. Sapporo, the historic village of Hokkaido, is closed. And the Beer Museum, wow, Beer Museum, is closed on December 31st. Chubu uh, has the Nagoya Castle, the Matsumoto Castle are closed. The Meiji Muras close on de that uh, December 31st, and the Hida Folk Village and Kenrukuin are not closed. So that was an interesting thing. I wonder if we can, if there's a video of the Emperor doing the greeting. Emperor greeting, and Japan live. Will there be videos of that? I guess so. after this ad. Wow. Okay, glad I watched that because now we know that that's going to be the first retirement of an Emperor of Japan in two centuries. This coming April. Cool. I hope I remember that so that I can, like, look into it. So that, that about does it for this episode of uh, Holiday Week. In the next one, we're going to be finishing off Holiday Week with two pagan holidays, which are Yule and Saturnalia, if I've said that right. If you liked it, a like and subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you need to do either one of those things. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.